Welcome to the Revolution 11 video series, Creating a Cloud Account and Hooking Up a Smart Thing, the Google Cloud Edition. Part 2, Setting Up an Organization and Creating a Developer Account. Hi, this is Jim from Revolution 11. I'll be walking you through today's demo. In this video, we're going to create an organization and add a developer account. It is a best practice to only use a root user account to manage resources and permissions, not to use for development. So that's the way we're going to set up our cloud instance from the get-go. Before we get started, we're going to want to make sure we have everything we need to set up our organization so we can give a developer access to a project. You will need to have a domain set up for your organization, and you will need to have access to the control panel wherever your domain is hosted. You will also want to plan to do your Google Cloud organization spin-up over the course of two days. There is a process of verifying your domain that can take a few hours, so it's safest to plan for that process to happen overnight. Okay, let's get started. Make sure that you're signed on to the Google Cloud Council and click on the Identity and Organization link in the menu bar to the left. You will get a pop-up giving you an overview of the identity setup process. Press the sign up button. The next screen tells you a little bit about the cloud identity service. Click the next button. The next screen asks for your business name and size. Fill those in and press the next button. You will be asked where your business is located. Pick a location from the drop-down and press the Next button. Enter your email address and press Next. You will be asked for your business's domain name. Enter it and press Next. You will be asked to confirm the domain you are using to set up with Google Cloud. Hit the Next button. You will be asked for your first and last name. Enter them and press the Next button. Provide the username and password that you will be using to manage identities and press the Next button. On the next screen, you will be asked to confirm that you are not a robot before you agree to the terms of service. If you are indeed not a robot, click on the checkbox next to I am not a robot. A pop-up will appear with a set of pictures. Click on the pictures that match the word or phrase that describe them and press the Verify button. Press on the Agree and Create Account button. You should see this screen when your account has been successfully created. Press the Go to Setup button. The next step is to verify your domain ownership. You'll want to be logged into the control panel of your domain in another tab or window. Press the Start button. We are already logged into our domain's host website, so we're going to click Yes here. We also already have our control panel for our domain opened up. So click next to I have opened up the control panel for my domain. You will be given two values to add as a new TXT record for your domain. Make note of them. Go to your domain control panel and find the area where you can add new DNS records. The interface for doing so will vary depending on your host provider. Make sure the type of record you are adding is a TXT record and enter the two values provided by Google, the host record and the TXT value. 
In this case, we are going to press the add record for this service provider's control panel. You should get some sort of confirmation that the record was added. Return to the Google Cloud Setup pop-up and click in the checkbox next to I added the TXT verification record. We also saved the record, so click on the I saved the TXT verification checkbox as well. Click on the Verify Domain button. You should see this screen while Google is verifying your domain. I've done a few of these, and you will almost certainly see a screen like this next. The Google Cloud Wizard will attempt to verify your domain over the course of about an hour. But the change you made up at your domain generally takes longer than an hour to propagate across the internet. So go ahead and leave it for now and come back in the morning. When you press the retry button, you will be presented with the same checkboxes you saw before. We've already done all this, so go ahead and click through them and press verify domain. You should see a screen like this once you've verified the domain. Okay, let's set up our developer account. Press the Create User. This will open the Create User screen. Give your user a first name, last name, and a username, and press the Add button. On the next screen, enter the email address that you will use to notify the developer of their account. Scroll down, type in a message for the developer, and press the Send Emails button. Okay, the setup is complete. Next, we're going to create a project and assign this developer to it. Press the Continue to Cloud Council button. You'll need to agree to the terms of service by checking the box, then press the Agree and Continue button. You'll land back on the IAM and admin home screen. There are a few more things that we should set up, like billing accounts and other roles, but we'll tackle that later on. Let's create our project. Click on the Google Cloud Platform icon in the upper left. You'll see that the home page is not available for an organization. You can select a project to view the council home page for it, or in our case, we don't have any projects. We are going to press the Create button in the upper right-hand corner to create a project. Give your project a name and press the Create button. After your project has been created, you will land on the project homepage. Let's give our developer access to this project. If the navigation bar to the left is not exposed, click on the icon in the upper left-hand corner to expose it and choose IAM and Admin. On the IAM screen for this project, click on the Add button up top. We will be using the Google Proximity API for our project, and it has three roles. We will be giving our developer access to the first role, Beacon Editor. Type in the developer account we will be using, click on the roles dropdown, find the proximity API and choose it, and pick Beacon Editor. Press the Save button. You should see the developer added to the project. Now let's make sure the developer can log on to the project. They should have gotten an email that looks something like this. Have them click on the Sign In button. On Sign In, the developer will be asked for the temporary password provided in the email. Have them enter it and press Next. The developer will be asked to accept the terms of service. Next, a new password must be created. Enter it in the Create Password field, and then confirm it in the Confirm Password field, and then press the Change Password button. 
your developer should now be logged in to your organization's cloud instance. If your organization is still in a trial status with Google Cloud, he'll see a pop-up something like this to agree to the terms of service for the trial. Additionally, your developer may have to set up a payment method and billing address to get this all working. The project can be selected at the top of the screen on the developer's homepage. This will bring up a pop-up of projects. Have the developer click on the Beacon project. The developer should now be able to access the project homepage. We'll explore setting up the Proximity API and working with it in the next video in this series. This concludes part two of creating a cloud account and hooking up a smart thing. Next time on Creating a Cloud Account and Hooking Up a Smart Thing, Part 3, Adding Beacons to Google's Beacon Dashboard with the Proximity API. See you then! Do you need help getting started with the cloud or IoT? Contact Revolution 11. We'd love to chat.